Utah politics. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Glenn Mills. It is time to go inside Utah politics. We do begin this morning with Utah Senator Mitt Romney. Senator, great to have you back on the show. Thanks so much for being here with us. Thanks, Glenn. Good to be with you. Uh, you've been traveling throughout the state of Utah quite a bit over the past week. Talk to us about what you've been seeing and doing here in Utah. Well, what I'm hearing from people is they're concerned about inflation. The I would high, think so. Uh, yeah, the, the high cost of gasoline, the high cost of food, they don't see it going away anytime soon. And they wonder why Washington isn't doing much to help out. Uh, Washington just, or the president just signed a, a new bill called the Inflation Reduction Act. It doesn't do anything like that at all. Actually, it probably modestly increases inflation. So uh, they want some help. And, and they're looking for us to do that. We also spent time in the southern part of our state where people are concerned about water and how we make sure that we can continue to grow and, and live our lives as we'd like to and have the water that we need uh, to have a, uh, an abundant lifestyle. Uh, let's dig into the Inflation uh, Reduction Act since you brought it up. You, you hear from you and your Republican colleagues, then you hear from Senates on the issue, and it's almost like we're living in two different worlds. Uh, Majority Leader Schumer, I hear him saying this is the most significant legislation passed in decades. He says, as clear as the nose on his face, it will reduce inflation. How do we get to this point where it's viewed so differently between the two parties? Well, truth in advertising has never had a big role in, in politics. Uh, and so they named something which had nothing to do with stopping inflation. This, by the way, when the president came into office two years ago. Uh, he, he didn't think about inflation, said inflation would be very temporary. And they put this bill together back then. So now it comes forward a little smaller than it was before. Now it comes forward. They're going to change the name. Before it was Build Back Better. Now it's the Inflation Reduction Act. It's the same thing. And it basically has the government spending more money. And when the government spends more money, it's inflationary. When the government cuts back, it puts the brakes on the economy. They're doing the opposite. There was one part of that bill that's getting a lot of attention. It was the amendment on the insulin cap, $35 cap for private insurance. If that's not the answer forward, what is? I, kn I know you've met with constituents here in the state of Utah who are really struggling with this issue. Yeah, there's no question, but we have to find a way to limit the price on insulin. Uh, and uh, there are a number of reasons why insulin has been treated differently than other pharmaceuticals. Uh, and the generics have not been able to make the kind of headway in insulin that they have in the other things that we buy. And uh, Senator Susan Collins of Maine has a bill which I'm looking at that may well be able to pass. Uh, but the approach the Democrats have taken I don't think was the most effective approach but look we clearly need to reduce the price of insulin Intermountain Healthcare is building a facility that is going to manufacture insulin on a generic basis their price per vial is thirty dollars so it's happening on a free market basis and the legislation uh, is not ideally suited in my view you mentioned water worries down in southern Utah not far from here our studio sits the Great Salt Lake we are literally watching it disappear yeah uh, you ran a bill that will uh, provide money for studies, but do we need to do more in the meantime? Yeah, number one, we need a study to find out what actions can we take that would actually solve the problem of the shrinking of the Great Salt Lake. And th at then at the same time, we have to have water uh, funding for the kinds of projects that will help us do that, whether it's buying water rights or, or preserving water through uh, re reusing our secondary water. There are a number of things, and we needed funding for that. That we got in the infrastructure bill, which I was able to help negotiate. So we put aside many billions of dollars, not just for Utah, but for the entire country to deal with these water issues. That, so it's a two-part process. One, study it. We got the Army Corps of Engineers that will study along with, by the way, the legislature in Utah. Brad Wilson has done a great job shepherding legislation through with the same intent. Let's figure out what the answers are. And then we have the funding necessary to build the projects that will help us preserve the lake. How crucial do you see it as preserving the lake? And are you confident it can be done? Uh, I'm confident it can be done. I'm not confident it can be done cheaply. Uh, you know, we spend a lot of money getting oil here from Alaska or down to the pipe, you know, the refineries and, and, the, and, and get it back to us. But, um, uh, but when people think about water, they don't want to spend that money. Well, water is more precious than oil. And we're going to have to spend whatever it takes to make sure that we do not have the Great Salt Lake dry up on us. Because the Great Salt Lake, with a dry lake bed, as you know, would, would send plumes of dust that would be right. hazardous to our health. It also would mean less lake effect snow into our mountains, which means less free or clear and, 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 uh, and pure water going into uh, the Colorado and into the Lake Powell. There are a lot of reasons why we have to take some action, and it may be expensive. 
Where do you see your bill going as far as the study aspect of it? Well, the Army Corps of Engineers is now tasked uh, with uh, evaluating what kinds of steps can be taken to actually maintain the lake and bring it back. Now, hopefully, Mother Nature will give us a lot of water, but if it doesn't, we got a plan for what else we can do. And so we're going to make that assessment and, and look at the projects that would be necessary to get the water that we need to be uh, in our communities and keep our businesses going and our homes uh, in, enjoying the life that they en enjoy. But uh, we need to know the particulars and the specifics, get the science, and then at that stage make the investments. And I mean, th the idea is as wild as pipelines to, uh, to buying uh, water rights to, uh, you know, be conserving. Clearly, we don't need to have grass median strips. We don't need to be watering our lawns mm -hmm. as much as we do. These are the kinds of things we'll have to evaluate. Yeah, and these are things we're now thinking about as we see the consequences of the, the lake drying up. You've been going around talking a lot about families and the need for policies to be family friendly. Uh, the Family Security Act is something you've been working on. Give us an update on where that stands right now. Well, the Democrats had their own plan, and it was part of the Biden original plan. It got stripped out, so their plan didn't pass. So now the Democrats are willing to work on a bipartisan basis, and that's way, the way most things get done properly in Washington, it's bipartisan. So they're willing to work on a bipartisan basis to see if we got a good program. And I think they're gonna like mine or something like it. Uh, it's pretty simple, we, we take the child tax credit, which is complicated, people have to hire folks to do their, uh, their taxes for them to figure out how they get the credit and then they get it at the end of the year. We take that money, which is being improperly used in my opinion, uh, with too much administration, too much cost of pre tax preparation, mm -hmm. and we use that money to instead give people a check on a monthly basis for each child that's under 18 years of age. And uh, that gets money to people when they need it, doesn't cost more money to the federal government, but it helps people recognize that they have the resources to have a child if they want a child. And why do you think that's so important in this day and age to have policies like that in place? Well, you know, we, we talk to people who have decided not to have a child, uh, in some cases to have an abortion or just not to have kids or not to have another kid. And the number one reason they decide to have a child limiting decision uh, is because they don't think they can afford having a kid. So saying to them, hey, guess what? If you do get pregnant, you're gonna get $700 a month while you're pregnant. Uh, number two, your child is gonna get $350 a month until they're six years of age and they get 250 a month. And if you have two or three kids, you're gonna get these checks. And by the way, it doesn't cost the government any more money because we're already spending it in a tax credit now. Mm -hmm. That's not effective. So it helps people, if they wanna have a child, they're able to know that they will have the resources to be able to do so. Uh, the PACT Act recently mm. went through Congress. Uh, you were one of the senators who voted against that. I've personally heard from veterans who were disappointed by that vote. What is your message to them? Yeah, there's a better approach, uh, and Republicans had a bill that was a better bill. Uh, I would have preferred the bill that we put forward. The bill that the Democrats put forward is almost $700 billion in spending over the next 10 years. It's a lot of money, so they say, well, gosh, is this absolutely needed? Well, it turns out that the people who drafted the bill said, look, if you've been in Afghanistan or in Iraq for one day and you were near a burn pit and you get any health condition at all, the federal government is gonna pay for that condition for the rest of your life. So we said, wait, wait, wait. It, it ought to be someone who's there for longer than one day. It ought to be a health condition that's actually related to the, uh, the emissions from this burn pit. And those things were eliminated from the bill. Uh, it didn't make sense, so a better bill is one that we're promoting. Okay, and now that this has passed, do you see that, what you call a better bill, still potentially on the table or not? Uh, you know, I think if Republicans are able to get the House, the Senate, and the White House at some point, we'll improve the legislation that was passed by the Democrats. Mm -hmm. What this means, by the way, what they've done, is gonna result in a huge backlog at our VA system, in our VA hospital here in Salt Lake. Because all sorts of people with any medical condition who've been to Iraq or in Afghanistan are gonna be able to get entirely free coverage for all their health care needs, whether it's related to that burn pit or not. So you're gonna, uh, we're gonna overwhelm the system. It really hasn't been properly thought through and I think it's unfortunate the way the Democrats pulled it off. All right, you talk about Republicans potentially taking back uh, both chambers of Congress, well, or, uh, Congress. We will see if that happens in the coming months. Senator, really glad to have you with us. Thanks for sharing your perspective with us. Thanks, Glenn, good to be with you. Still to come, two Republican lawmakers